Great. Welcome and thank you very much for joining today's session, which revolves around your Florida Electronic Library Gale resources that can help you and your users find successful funding information and information to help individuals successfully get a new business started. Uh, my name is Emily Majeski and I am one of Gale's trainers. Just to give you a, an idea of what we're going to do with our time today, most of the session is going to be spent in two resources, Small Business Resource Center and Demographics Now as two key business resources available to everyone through Florida Electronic Library. As we're taking a look at the idea of funding and successful starts for businesses, we're going to take a look at some of the basic funding information that's available in Small Business Resource Center. We'll take a look as well at how you can find information on particular types of funding within Small Business Resource Center. And then we're going to take a look at some of the information that can be used to support, you know, a business plan or whatever case you're drawing up for investors within uh, demographics now, so some actual data to make the case that you are worthy of the funding that you are asking for. If you have questions along the way, go ahead and chat those in via the chat box. If you're viewing the recording of today's session and you have questions, I will be bringing up my contact information again as we get into the end of our session today. All right. So I'm going to start off, as I mentioned, live in a couple of the resources that you have from Florida Electronic Library. If you're the kind of person who just wants to follow along as I uh, you know, go through these resources visually. You can just watch the webinar screen. If you prefer to click along, make sure that you have a separate browser screen open and have your access for Small Business Resource Center and Demographics Now through Florida Electronic Library ready to go. I'm starting off in Small Business Resource Center because this is a really fantastic tool for any kind of background information your small business community needs. It's, as the title suggests, a resource center for all kinds of small business information needs. Uh, as you can see on the front of the screen here, it goes through everything from planning and funding a business to actually getting that business going and starting to manage or make decisions as a business owner. We'll take a look at some of the content related to funding as we go through today's session, but I do want to quickly point out that Small Business Resource Center is part of our unified interface. So if you have used Academic OneFile, General OneFile, any of the periodical collections, your GVRL nonfiction ebook titles, uh, you should be seeing kind of a similar look and feel in Small Business Resource Center. And you'll notice as we start to click into some of the funding related information and take a look at what business can actually, business owners and, and users can actually do with that content, you'll see some similarities across the resources. So hopefully it won't be too difficult to transition for you if you've used some of your other Florida Electronic Library resources. The other thing about that, about Small Business Resource Center being on this unified interface, is that it is mobile responsive. So as you're thinking about the individuals in your community who could use funding related information, keep in mind when you open up Small Business Resource Center on a mobile device, all you need is a browser on that device. You don't need a separate app. The system is going to actually recognize the size of the screen of that device and resize to be appropriate. And that's whether or not it is uh, you know, a Droid or an iPhone or regardless of the operating system, it's going to give you that nice seamless functionality. You will see some of the tools roll up into specific areas. For instance, our search box is appearing in this magnifying glass. If you click that, it expands. Or if you want to take a look at, you know, some of the advanced search features, those will be under this little three bar icon. You can see we can get into some of those additional features available in Small Business Resource Center underneath that menu. All right, so let's take a look in Small Business Resource Center at how to help your users connect with some background information related to how to actually get funding for their business uh, or for a, you know, a startup idea. Again, Small Business Resource Center has an array of different options for connecting with content. So you could always do something like uh, search for startup information or business finance information via the basic search. We're going to take a look at some of the advanced search options a little bit later, later in the session. That would certainly be an option as well. And then as you can see on the home page, there are some great browsable options. 
for me, when it comes to some of the key processes related to starting and managing a business within your community, one of the nice tools built into Small Business Resource Center is this how-to area. This is another browse option, and you can see some additional areas here to browse by business topic or based on business type. The how-to area really compiles some of the key background information available in Small Business Resource Center just to help direct individuals to some of that kind of overview information, some of the key knowledge and details that they'll need to successfully complete some important business processes. And you can see in this list of information, one of the things that's been pulled out specifically for your business users is how to finance your business. So this is a great area to start as we're talking about, you know, how to support funding and successful starts for your business community. How to finance your business is a great option as a browsable, quick way to connect to your users with that background information. I'm just going to click on that topic in the how-to area, and you'll see that the system basically runs a search for me just in a couple of clicks, and it's giving me a great variety of content to support that understanding of how to actually successfully finance a small business. Now you'll see on this list of results, we're getting a couple of examples of each type of content. So we're getting some business plan examples. These are actual examples of business plans that have been used by a variety of business users to make the case that their business deserves funding. We then have some recommended resources and then periodical content coming from magazines and journals, news results from different news publications, news wires, even some multimedia content in the form of videos and some curated links out to websites related to this topic of how to finance a business. So this is a great um, sort of resource center within Small Business Resource Center on how to actually connect with or how to get started when it comes to managing the process of funding your business idea. Now, like any or like many of the Gale resources that you have, when we're looking at this list of examples of different content, if there is a content type that we want to see more of, we can use our limiters on the right-hand side of our screen or click the content type title to jump right into that specific source of information. So if I want to see, for instance, more than the three featured recommended resources, I can click the recommended resources header type uh, for content types and jump in to view all 134 examples in this case. Now, when it comes to recommended resources, you saw in the previous screen we also incorporate things like periodical content and uh, multimedia videos, links out to websites on a variety of small business topics within Small Business Resource Center. The recommended resources are a really lovely set of content, especially when you think of building that key knowledge set for your small business users. These are resources that are pulled as chapters from larger books about a particular uh, business topic. So if you think of those business guidebooks or business reference titles from Gale as well as some of our partner publishers, you'll be thinking of the right uh, set of content for this recommended resources area. Basically, quick chapters to help individuals wrap their heads around the steps for completing particular processes or the particular types of funding sources, things like that in this particular example. Now before we jump into one of these individual uh, uh, chapters or articles, if you want to think of them that way, from the recommended resources area, I do want to point out some additional options for limiting down the content. The first one is Small Business Research Center does have some citation-only content just to provide an additional layer of value. I always find it helpful when I'm running searches to limit to full text just to make sure that I'm finding the most relevant content that I can connect with right now in the resource today. You'll also see options here for things like publication dates. We could limit a little bit more based on the subject area. 
and even take a look at the specific type of document. So maybe, for instance, if we're looking at the initial phases of acquiring funding for a business idea, we may want to focus on topic overviews as chapters within these recommended resources that are going to give us that great background that we need on how to fund a business. And you could certainly layer in any of those additional uh, limiting options, search within the results, et cetera. I want to take us into one of these examples. There's this great topic overview on how to get your business funded. All we have to do is click the title of a result, and that is going to display the text. If we've limited it to full text, we should see the actual full text. Scroll down our screen here. And then we do have you know, bibliographic information at the top of the screen, as well as some great tools for working with this content over to the right and kind of underneath our bibliographic information for this resource. So I want to take a look at those tools. Let me know via the chat box if you have any questions about anything that you've seen so far in Small Business Resource Center, any of the content that you'll find, uh, how you can use some of the quick browsing options that you've seen via the how-to area to help individuals start building that background knowledge about how they're actually going to go about funding a business. Let me know via the chat box if you do have any questions. All right, now keep in mind as librarians, if you are finding, you know, or as library staff, if you're finding a chapter that's really relevant, if for instance, you just want to give your users one example of, you know, how to go about securing funding for your business. You're finding one great chapter from within the, the recommended resources, for example. You have a lot of options for taking this content with you and for sort of sharing it out with your users. We'll talk about some of those options, but any of these articles or entries can be emailed, downloaded, or printed from the system, so you could easily you know, email this out to individuals, just entering in the emails that you want to send it to, maybe a little uh, message, decide how you want to actually include the content, whether it's full text or as a separate PDF attachment. Uh, but it gives you that ability to kind of push this to individuals as well. Certainly by printing it, you could have copies at your reference desk. Uh, and then we'll come back to the download options in just a minute here as well. But I do want to quickly touch on some of the other areas. You saw how easy it was with email, download, and print to kind of just know that that function is available underneath this tools area and just click on it to start initiating that particular process, as you're seeing here with the, the print option. Most of the other tools in Small Business Resource Center on an individual document are, are quite similar to that. For instance, you know, if you have business users who are on the go a lot, maybe they want to listen to this content, very simple to click play to actually have this content read word by word. And there is the option to download the MP3 as well. It is machine reading, so it, you know, keep that in mind. It's not the same as having an actor actually narrate or a voice talent person actually narrate this content. Uh, you have millions of documents across your Gale resources, but it is quite, um, quite useful or a quite valuable service to be able to add. Similar to that ability to listen to the content, you can also translate the information very simply, uh, selecting the language of choice that will support your user. And that is a machine translation as well. So I like to think of that as, you know, if there's a difficult uh, section of this document, that might be an easier way to help someone kind of compare it to, you know, the language that they're comfortable with uh, com compared to English. Um, as we look at these tools, a couple of other things to be aware of with your business community. If you have an individual who's finding a document and they want to include it in a business plan or, you know, show their, their funding sources that they've done some research, very simple to create a citation just by clicking on the citation tools area. You can copy and paste this export it to a variety of services, and certainly you have options at the top of this uh, citation toolbox to kind of change into the specific citation uh, format of choice. So nice to have that option again if business users are finding information that they want to kind of append into a business plan or a funding proposal. Really nice to have that quick option of doing that. 
A couple of things that I want to make sure we point out for your business users are the highlights and notes area and then the download capabilities for taking this content with you, aside from just saving it to a USB or saving it to this individual computer. When it comes to highlights and notes, totally up to you and your users as to whether they want to leverage this tool within the Gale content. Lots of useful um, applications when you're thinking about business users with this highlights and notes tool. As you're explaining this or promoting this within your community as something that's available in Small Business Resource Center, be sure individuals know that if they use the Highlights and Notes tool on an individual document, they do need to make sure to email, download, or print that content out. Uh, if they close out Small Business Resource Center without taking a document that they've added Highlights and Notes to with them, they will not see those Highlights and Notes on that document in the future. So if you use Highlights and Notes, be sure to email, download, or print. It's a very simple tool to use, and I can see this being really useful if someone is, you know, uh, looking for that background information or they're finding some evidence that they want to include within a business plan or a funding proposal. Very simple here to come in, select some text. I'm just clicking my mouse and dragging. And when I get to the end of the portion that I want to select to add a highlight or a note to it, when I release my mouse, I'm going to see a pop-up highlights and notes tool. What's cool about this is you can color code the information by selecting from six different colors. We can add some notes, um, funding specifics for small businesses. And then when we print this, email it, or download it, we'll actually have that annotation built right into the source for us or as a list at the bottom of the document, uh, the excerpts that we added highlights to right along with any notes. So it's just another great way to keep organized um, to really, you know, if, for instance, I'm trying to figure out what are my options for funding, I can just highlight some quick examples of those um, options within this background entry and kind of keep organized as I'm finding additional information. Again, those highlights and notes, you'll have a record if you email, print, or download. But what I'm really excited about for your business users here is the download options. You can see here, when I click on download, again, I can take this as a static file, you know, put it on a USB and plug it into any other computer or just save it to my computer if I want to. But I do also have the ability here to pull this content, including any highlights and notes that I added, into Microsoft OneDrive or into Google Drive so that I then have access to that content anytime I log into my Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive account. Uh, it doesn't automatically expire, and that does afford you some additional options for continuing to work with the content, uh, continuing to collaborate with others on that content. So let's say I know a lot of business users have access to Microsoft 365 and are using Microsoft OneDrive. Let's say I want to pull this article and those highlights and notes that I just added right into my Microsoft OneDrive so that I can keep track of them. I'm just going to click the download option, select my save to OneDrive as my format, and then finalize that selection by clicking download. Now what you'll see is the system automatically takes me from that tab in Small Business Resource Center, opens up a new tab in my browser, and just asks me to log in to my Microsoft account. If I were taking this into Google Drive, it would be the same process where it opens up a second tab and has me log in. If I'm not already logged in in the browser, it's just going to be branded with the Google uh, kind of standard sign-in information. You can see that that's it. From here, it's going to close out that additional window, bring me back into the Small Business Resource Center window where I'm on the document that I just downloaded, and tell me that it's actually pulled that into Microsoft 365. Now, when I log into that Microsoft 365 account, any time in the future, until I delete that content, I'm going to have a record of that information. So I'm just using my pathway to get into uh, Microsoft OneDrive. You may have a slightly different pathway. Whoops. And what we should see here, just to make it easy to find this content, the system is going to create a, a resource-specific folder, so I'm just looking for my Small Business Resource Center that the system automatically created for me in my OneDrive. 
when I open that folder up, I'll see any content that I've added in from Small Business Resource Center over time. I can move this content around just like I could any other document in my Microsoft OneDrive. So I could create a small business startup folder, for instance, save all of my funding information in that folder, um, you know, really give some organization capabilities. And then when I open it up in Microsoft OneDrive, it's going to open up in Microsoft Word online format. If I had saved to Google Drive, it would be opening up in Google Docs format. But the great thing about this, you can see I've got my highlights. At the bottom of the document, I have any notes that I added. Because this is in Microsoft Word Online or in um, Google Docs format, I can now do things like continue to edit this document, including adding additional highlights and notes, and share it out with other individuals as well. So if I have a business partner, for instance, and we're working on the funding phase, I can say, hey, I found this great step-by-step -step article in Small Business Resource Center. I want to share this with you, get your thoughts, have them comment back and forth, et cetera. Now, there is a question that's just come into the chat box about whether that content from Small Business Resource Center can be saved in PDF. And the answer is when you hit download, when you click download in your, your Gale resources, it's typically going to tell you if it's available as a PDF. For this individual document, it's not. For some of the Gale chapters, this is um, published by our, our partner publisher, uh, Wiley. They provide some content for Small Business Resource Center. So this isn't one of ours. For some of the content, particularly uh, any Gale information, you may see when you hit that download option, a PDF listing that would be listed right under HTML. Now keep in mind, that's just the automatic um, you know, options that are provided within the Gale resource. Certainly once you've pulled it in, you know, if you're pulling that content into uh, Microsoft OneDrive and you've got it in Microsoft Word Online, if I open this up in Word, and take it out of the browser to actually edit it. If you've worked with Word in the past, you may know that when you go to the file Save As, it'll give you the option to save it as a PDF. Or certainly, you know, you could do the workaround. If I go up into my file options, and this is just my computer-specific version of Word, so you may see slightly different steps, but we could certainly pull it into Word and then save it as a PDF document on our computer. Or you could do, um, you know, in the Small Business Resource Center, print, and then depending on your printer settings, print to PDF. But it just depends on the source itself as to whether we're able to provide the actual PDF of that uh, original source. So that's a great question. Does anyone else have any other questions about any of the tools that you've seen on the content within Small Business Resource Center? Go ahead and chat those in if you do. If not, we're going to take a look at some additional options for finding information about specific funding sources, pinpointing additional funding-related information before we then take a look at demographics now and how to actually get some data to make your funding case. But keep in mind, as we're looking at the Small Business Resource Center information, uh, specific funding types, for instance, all of those documents that you see in Small Business Resource Center are going to have these same tools. So your business community can come in and annotate documents, easily print email download to share them, certainly with the download capabilities for Microsoft 365 and Google, uh, Google Drive, you can absolutely open up a whole world of collaboration between business partners who are in need of authoritative information about the process of finding funding. Uh, or if they just want to, you know, again, pull a citation and include that in a business plan or funding proposal, those are all going to be options as we continue on in Small Business Resource Center's content as well. All right. Okay. There are just a couple of things to point out here as we're on this individual document. When your users are finding helpful background information in Small Business Resource Center, I just want to point out they do have some areas to connect with similar information quite quickly built right into this document. All the way at the bottom of this document in the Gale resource, you'll see 
some related resources that show up. These are links to individual articles that have some similarities to the document that we're looking at now. So they touch on you know, small business funding in some way, for instance. One of the other classic features that I really love when it comes to making it easy for a business user to connect from this background information to similar additional sources is the related subject area. You can see from here, they can just make one click and click on you know, a, a subject area related to this individual result that they're finding to very simply start finding additional information on the process. So maybe for this, in this case, you know, business financing, all we have to do is click on that subject and you'll see it's gonna start connecting us with additional similar sources. And from here, you can use some of the same skills that we you know, just talked about uh, when we were doing that how to browse for business finance information. You can click into you know, any of the content types, use the limiters on the right-hand side. And one of the areas that I, I do want to point out in the limiters here are the publication title. This may be a quick way, again, to give individuals that ability to pull some additional background information. In the publication title, it's even going to show you, you know, how many sources are coming from a particular title uh, or a particular magazine or journal or what have you. And individuals can simply click in these areas, you know, if I'm I'm realizing, hey, um, you know, a lot of the, the information, a lot of the articles that I'm finding that are relevant to my need are coming from this title, I can then click in and view all of the results specifically from that title. Or in the list of individual search results, if I click the actual title's name here, what I'll get is kind of an about this publication page that shows you for that title all of our coverage information for that content in Small Business Resource Center and that allows you to click in and view all of the chapters from that title. So it's a quick way to kind of start connecting again with additional information, additional background on a particular topic. It's taking a while to load for whatever reason, so I'm going to take us back to the home page and not belabor that point. Uh, again, when you're on those individual documents with key background information that's helpful for a specific user, look for those related subject areas. They may quickly allow them to connect with additional content. And then remember that those limiters on the right-hand side are going to help them quickly pinpoint the specific information that's of use. All right, and for some reason, it seems like I'm a little stuck, so I'm going to just close out and open Small Business Resource Center back up. Just kind of seems like my connection is a little slow at this point. Um, but what we'll take a look at here are some of the options for connecting with information on specific funding sources. While this is loading, I'll kind of verbally describe for you. Um, on the home page where I had mentioned, you know, the browse options include things like information on planning for funding, starting, and managing a business. Those areas on the home page are actually quick starts or jumping off points into additional information on specific topics. Each of those pages have been curated by our editorial team, so they cover some really important information for your business users. And when an individual clicks on any of those topics, what they're going to see is a curated page that includes an image related to that particular business topic, just a great overview uh, article on that topic, and then some additional content organized from there on the page. So as an example here, if we're looking, you know, we've got that background information on the funding process. We know the steps that we need to take to get funding as a small business user. What we can do here is use this funding area as another quick starting off point to find information about specific types of funding. So self-funding, loans and grants, government funding options, traditional lending, angel investors, and venture capital. And when you click on any of those quick starts from the home page, particularly when it comes to funding, great way to get a, a you know, easy overview of some of the funding type options. You'll see, again, an image 
a full overview. In this case, we could read all about what angel investors and venture capital is. And then from there, bucketed information. So some of our recommended resources, those again are going to be the chapter overviews, in this case on angel investors and venture capital. Uh, some magazines and journals and news results related to uh, angel investors and venture capital. Curated websites and videos. And then even some directory information giving us links out to, you know, contacts related to venture capital in this case or angel investors. So it's a great way when you look at the home page, again, of Small Business Resource Center to connect with that background information, a quick overview at the top of the page, and then additional sources to further familiarize that user with a particular funding type. And then on these pages, again, if they click into any of the additional uh, or any of the individual articles, they're going to see all of those same tools. So not just how do I go about the process of funding a business, what are some of my funding source options, and then once I've sort of started to center on a funding source, what are the pieces of background information that I need to understand to successfully acquire that type of funding. So it's all of that great background of business information built right into Small Business Resource Center. Now, I hope that this is just my computer. It's just taking a little bit longer for whatever reason to load some of the things <laughs> for me today, so I apologize for that, but hopefully you, you get the point there that there are some great browse options built into Small Business Resource Center to highlight those key sources of information for individuals who are trying to acquire funding, and then they've got some great tools built into the individual sources. I do want to, rather than waiting for some of that information to load, take a look here in the advanced search area, and if you have individuals or if you're helping individuals who are now at the point where they've got that background information on the funding process in general, specific types of funding sources, how you can help pinpoint further information in Small Business Resource Center. And that's really where our advanced search area comes into play. You'll see if you click into the advanced search anywhere within Small Business Resource Center, you're going to get a pretty straightforward layout here where we have our search boxes in this upper part of the screen, and then some additional limiting options below that. These two portions of the advanced search screen can be used in any number of ways to really help target uh, sources related to the funding process. Um, up in the top of the screen, what I always like to point out here is the ability to really start to show the system exactly how you want it to look for you know, your, um, your search terms that you're leveraging. So let's say, for instance, someone has, you know, researched the funding process, they've taken a look at some of the different types of funding, and they're interested in finding further information about loans, uh, different types of loans. What they could do is enter that loan term. I'm just using a wild card so that it'll bring back, you know, multiple endings related to loans. And what we can do is instead of just doing a keyword search, we can tell the system that we want it to look for that term as the subject. So only bring us back content that's been indexed as being about loans, commercial loans, uh, different types of loans, et cetera. What we can then also do is start to combine that, maybe we're getting a little bit more specific. So, you know, if we have a business type in mind, we know that that's the kind of uh, funding after we've done some of the background research that we're looking for. Maybe we want to find examples of other types of, of businesses within our industry that have successfully acquired that kind of loan or uh, some of the issues related to the type of business that we are uh, looking at. So maybe, for instance, we're looking at opening up a franchise, we want to see what are some of the issues related to franchises uh, or franchising and how do they relate to acquiring a loan. Well, one of the things we can do here is maybe open this up so that we know we're getting that content related to, uh, you know, or content that's been indexed as being about loans. We can open this up and say, I want to make sure that in those documents that you're finding for me, somewhere in the full text, they specifically mention franchise. You know, and there's all kinds of ways that you can add in additional search terms. Take a look at these search indices. You'll really get some options for helping your users, your business community, 
target very specific information related to their funding needs. And then below that area on the screen, I always like to point out some of the additional options here to limit based on date if you really want the most recent content or you're looking for historical information for whatever reason. We also have content and document type limiters to specify the very specific type of document you're looking for or the wider content type. So, you know, in this case, maybe we just want magazines and journals that talk about that loan aspect from the standpoint of franchising. Then once you've set as many of these options as you want or as makes sense for a particular search, we can very quickly click that search option and start to connect with information. You can see in this case, it's giving us articles that relate to the concept of loans specific to that topic of franchise issues from within, you know, recent publications, magazines, and journals, a really nice set or perspective. Now, there are certainly other ways you could use that. You know, we've taken a look at how to target specific types of funding, uh, not just to build background information on what those funding types are, but then to even target things further and take a look at how those funding types relate to our specific business need as a business user. We could also use this to start getting into, or use that advanced search area to start getting into the idea of putting a case together, how to make our funding proposal really stand out, or how to make our, our business idea stand out in the minds of different investor types or funding sources. Um, within the advanced search area, one of the content types that you'll notice called out are the business plans. So if you're thinking about individuals who are trying to, you know, find funding information, take a look at what types of funding sources might be available to them, target those sources to their specific business topics, services, et cetera. And then once they've found that information, really start to put together a great plan for their business or a great proposal to take to their investors, they can use this option in the advanced search area to target specifically to business plans. Uh, and then what we can do is, you know, maybe we want to enter in a keyword or a subject so that we're finding example business plans related to our industry, in this case maybe cleaning, uh, housekeeping, et cetera. We now have some examples of actual plans that have been put together proposals to help start making that case that my business has been well thought out, it's deserving of funding. Uh, this will give individuals example plans related to their industry that they can take a look at. You know, what is the information that they need to include to make that case? What are the things that they need to make sure that they've been on the lookout for in addition to just understanding, you know, the funding sources that might be available to them, uh, making sure that they can put that case together. Okay, now I want to make sure that as we're talking about this idea of making the case for a business, having that information that you need to really successfully present yourself for funding as a business, uh, I want to check in quickly to the chat box and just see if there are any questions before we move out of Small Business Resource Center. Uh, we've taken a look today in Small Business Resource Center as a source of just basically helping individuals get started in the idea of understanding how to fund or acquire funds for a small business. We've taken a look uh, via a couple of different um, search options at how to connect them with specific types of funding sources information, even how to target that funding source information to their specific business needs via the advanced search area, taking a look at some of the document tools that are built in across Small Business Resource Center. And now as we move into this idea of actually taking all that information and starting to put together the case that you're worthy of funding for whatever funding source you're targeting, if you have any questions, please chat those into the chat box at this time. All right, if not, I want to open up, and again, if you're going to click along, make sure you have your access to demographics now open. This is really the tool that I think of when it comes to making the case for a business or having any of the data that you need to back up the decisions that you're making as a business. 
Demographics Now is a tool that allows individuals to see demographic information, including you know, basic census information, projections, et cetera, consumer expenditure information, as well as all kinds of consumer-related attitudes targeted to the geography of choice across the United States. So it really gives some great data, and we'll take a look at what that entails as we continue exploring today. Um, but it is just a fantastic source when you think about putting together a case or having the information to really build your case as a business. So once you understand that funding process, understand the types of funding that are available and start to get to that point where you're ready to target those funding sources and really present your best foot forward as a business user, Demographics Now is a great place to go to start getting some data to include in those business plans and funding proposals. One of the key areas that I want to point out in Demographics Now is we're looking at this from a funding standpoint is going to be the Demographics tab. And this is where we really have the ability to get at key data about who the consumers are within an area, um, kind of build our case, show the individuals that we're asking for funding from, that we have done our research, we understand our customers, we know, you know, maybe how much they're likely to spend on our service, and we've planned accordingly. Uh, you're really going to have access to some of that information within this demographics tab of Demographics Now. Just some basics related to Demographics Now, if you haven't used the source in the, the past. All of the data that we see in the middle portion of the screen here is going to first start being driven based on the geography that we select within Demographics Now. You can see when we first open it up, it's going to default to the entire U.S., but we can enter in any zip code, city, county, uh, any number of different geographies just by typing in the search box. There's also a geography menu here where you can start to drill down into specific types of geographies and select up to 16 different geographies to even compare or summarize in the same report. For today's purposes, if we are looking at funding, as a business we may have a specific location in mind where we're going to be based. Uh, so I wanted to start off with just an example of an address as our geography. I'm going to type in an address in Orlando, and once I finish typing this in and hit enter on my computer, you'll see it's going to fill in for me because we're looking at a file or a, a set of data, we need more than one point. We basically need to have a radius in this case around. Uh, the address that we're looking for. So if I type in an address, the system is already, is automatically going to add some radii around that address so that I have a set of data to look at in terms of who the customers and consumers are within that area. Now automatically when I type in an address, it's going to add in a one, three, and five mile radius. But what I can do here is actually change that number and even the unit of measurement around my address. So if I want to do 15 minutes drive time around my address, if I'm looking at uh, you know, getting a, a house cleaning service started, and I know I'm going to service individuals within that 15 minute driving range, this gives me the ability to start looking at that specific radii or radius around my business location or where I'm doing business from. Now, you can take a look at all kinds of different reports within Demographics Now. That next tab or next box of information over from the geography selection box is our report type box. For any of these reports that you pull up and start to see in the middle of the screen, you'll notice you can print, download, and email them. So these make great data to append into you know, a, a financial case or a funding proposal or a business plan, however you want to think about those uh, sets of information that you'd be providing a particular lender or uh, investor. Lots of great ways to take the information that you find in Demographics Now with you. Now as we look at our specific address, I want to point out 
you have a number of different types of reports available. I'm just going to stay in the comparison report area. Where these would be useful is if I have included more than one geography. If, for instance, you know, I'm, I'm looking at the 15-minute the drive time and the half an hour drive time to figure out what's my service area going to be. I could include both of those ranges and then use a comparison report to compare side by side the data that I'm looking at. If I use the summary report, it's going to summarize that information, compile it into basically one location and show me the data in the middle part of the screen. As you start to look at the specific data that's available to help you and help your business users make their funding cases, there's really just a great great set of content in demographics now. The biggest one that I like to point out when you're thinking about funding is understanding your market size or showing that you've done some research into how much demand there is for your business or the service that you're offering. And one of the key sets of data to help you do that within demographics now is the consumer expenditure information. Uh, this is based on the data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Our partners for Demographics Now take that data, uh, load it up into Demographics Now, do some processing and slicing and dicing so that you can actually see it for the geography of your choice, and then give you the ability to look at that consumer expenditure information in some of these reports. Now you can see here when we look at these CEX reports in this drop-down report type selection box, uh, you do have the ability to look at specific areas if we want to view, you know, what are the specific expenditures by household related to convenience stores or related to apparel information. It's going to go line by line and give us that consumer expenditure info. But what we can also do here is that there is an option to look at just a general consumer expenditure comparison. I like this because it breaks out a number of different services line by line from, you know, a variety of categories of businesses. And one of the things you'll see here is if we scroll down, we have housekeeping services listed. So if I am doing that, you know, putting together a proposal for a business plan, I can see that within my 15 minutes of my Orlando address, on average households are spending, whoops, a little over $100 a year each. And what's really cool about this is I can then come up and actually see how many households I have in the area and even take that number. So if there are you know, over 160,000 households and the average household is spending $100, basically I can add two zeros on the end of that. And that's going to be the size of the housekeeping market within this 15-minute drive time. So I'm able to find that total consumer expenditure just by taking any of these line items, the average household annual expenditure, multiplying it by the number of households, and really, again, then you know, exporting this or printing it, emailing it, including it as part of my proposal uh, to really show that I've done my homework and I've set up myself for success in terms of how I'm going to be managing this business. Now, if you want to take this a little further, one of the cool things that you can do here, I mentioned, you know, you can compare more than one geography. One of the things you might do as an interesting comparison is go into, after you've entered, you know, you're taking a look at this report for this one address, but you could go into the geography menu and either compare these numbers to the entire U.S., or I thought it might be interesting to see, you know, take a look at the state of Florida, compare their expenditure information line by line, and see, you know, does this really make sense for the area? Now, one thing to keep in mind is that, you know, the average or the median household income may be higher for the state than for your specific geography. So if there is a discrepancy, it, it may just be, you know, partially because folks in this area make a little less, but that there may still be a need for the service. But you can kind of compare line by line those expenditures. That would be a great piece of information as well, again, to show you've done your homework, you know what the market is like in the area. Now, beyond just sizing your market, I'm going to go ahead and click into the geography menu and remove that, uh, that addition of Florida so that we're just looking at that 15-minute drive time around our Orlando address. 
but I really encourage you to come in, enter in an address, maybe even just enter in your home address or your library address in here, and start pulling some of the different reports available within this demographics tab. It's fascinating, the information that you can find on the consumers within this particular geography. We can get some basic demographic information, understand you know, exactly what the folks in this area are like from a basic demographic standpoint, uh, but we can also start taking a look at some of the other reports that are available. Simmons, for instance, is a really fascinating set of data. It comes originally from Experian. What they do is they administer a continuous survey to a representative sample of individuals across the U.S. to get their actual attitudes about specific services, brands, et cetera, to understand what it is they're looking for as consumers. And you can kind of see this information in a variety of reports. There's Simmons information related to media consumption, related to preferences for you know, automotive purchases, uh, what they like in terms of you know, their health and beauty beauty products and services, really gives you an in-depth understanding of these individuals. One of my favorites is the Simmons Lifestyle Demographic Statement Comparison because it goes through you know, basic family information, uh, attitudes about things like recycling, um, you know, apparel attitudes, et cetera. I love this general attitudes area. It just gives you the most fascinating full profile of who the individuals are within a particular area. Just take a look at those variety of reports, but basically at the end of the day, in addition to sizing your market via Demographics Now and having that data to include within any business plan or, you know, again, funding proposal, you can really start to get to know the consumers and incorporate that information into your planning and your proposals for funding to again make as strong as case as possible that your business has been well thought out and is going to have the data behind it to really ensure its success. If you have any questions about the demographics tab, let me know. But we've got just a couple minutes of time here, so if you don't mind, I'd love to take you into the maps tab for a second as well. Because certainly you can, you know, again, print, download, or email any of the reports that you're seeing in this demographics tab in Demographics Now. One of the other visuals you could do is actually pull a map of the area to incorporate into your proposal. Documents and submit along with, you know, your funding proposals. The maps area gives you another great visual. What it's going to load uh, by default when we click into the maps area is the currently active geography. And so in this case, we're going to see our address pinpointed in the middle and then around that address, kind of a red line showing me that's the 15 minute drive time around my individual address. Now we can do a lot in terms of displaying different things on this map. The mapping tools area, this little key over to the right hand side, determines what we display or what we don't display. The biggest thing that I want to point out, if you're thinking about funding and having an additional visual, is the thematic layer area. And what you see in that thematic layer area is controlled by this thematic controls box. Right now, our thematic layer is not checked, so it's not currently active in the middle portion of our screen. If I check that box, you'll start to see on the screen the whole thing color-coded based on particular data. Now, the data that it's color-coding is what's showing up in our thematic controls area. So right now, when I've made this thematic layer active, you can see it's mapping out for me the total population from 2016 in this kind of color system of red and yellow based on at or at the census tract level. Now I can change that information. So what's really, really awesome about this and a great visual, again, to include in any kind of proposal that you're putting forward for funding, is we can go into this variable area and by using the dropdown to select more variables, we have access to every single individual data point 
in demographics now to map it out in those different color systems to see the density of these specific variables. So let's say, for instance, again, I'm looking at starting up a housekeeping uh, business. I've done some background information. I know what the total expenditure is for the area that I'm serving. Um, you know, I just want a visual to show individuals what it kind of looks like within my area of service. I can come into this thematic controls area in the mapping, drill down into the specific variable. In this case, I'm looking at consumer expenditures. I may want to see what the five-year projections are for consumer expenditures. And then as I continue to drill down into, you know, total expenditure related to housing, and then related to household operations and other household expenses. At some point, I'll get down to an individual data point, and when I make the selection, in this case, my housekeeping services, consumer expenditure projections for 2021, when I click OK, the map will update, and it's going to actually map out that variable now, my housekeeping expenditures at the census track level. You can change the color coding if it's easier for you to see a specific color. Basically what this is showing you is how that expenditure maps out. And uh, if you look at the key here, you can see anything in red is higher, the yellow is a little bit lower. So this just gives you an idea. And we can zoom in on the map too if you want to see a little bit closer around that geography. Certainly possible to do that. This gives you that visual that you could include. Uh, again, we can export this map, email this map, include it that way in a business proposal. This is also going to be useful as we're starting to get started in our business to understand where in our service area we may be, you know, have um, stronger potential to generate some customers. Maybe we want to put some advertisements in that area, for instance. But a really nice way to visually document that same information from the demographics area. Okay, and so I'm seeing in the chat box come in here, uh, the question popping up as we're looking at this map. So you would advertise to people in the dark red zip codes for housekeeping services. Well, keep in mind on this map, if we look at the current thematic controls, those are actually um, census block groups. If you wanted to map this out based on zip codes, you could do that you have the option to kind of change. I tend to leave it at auto select because that'll typically give you the smallest um, breakdown uh, that's, that's possible for your current geography. But yeah, essentially if you look then in the mapping tools box at the key uh, for this map or for that theme that we've graphed out, anything in darker red is higher in this case, projected 2021 housekeeping services, household expenditures. So we might want to, you know, put some flyers out in some of these darker areas, or at least know that those are going to be some of the places we may want to target um, further in the future. So yeah, that would be one way you could interpret that map, certainly. All right. Okay, so we are at the end of our time together today. Uh, you have seen a lot in terms of Small Business Resource Center being a great source for background information on the funding process in general and then specific types of funding, uh, even giving you the ability via that advanced search area to target uh, specific funding sources to particular business topics or types of businesses, having all those great tools for all of that information in Small Business Resource Center to add highlights and notes, take it into, uh, you know, Google Drive or Microsoft OneDrive for collaboration with business partners or, you know, funding sources that you've reached out to. You've also seen in demographic now, how to really pull some data, the demographic information, the consumer expenditure information, even the visuals via the map area to really support those funding cases. If you have any questions at this time about anything that you've seen today and you're live on the session, go ahead and chat those questions in. While I'm waiting for those questions, I am going to take us back into our slides and just mention that beyond today's session, as you're finding information, you're exploring your business resources from Florida Electronic Library, from Gale, 
you can go to our free training site at gale.com slash training to get some additional sources, guided tutorials, tip sheets that you can print out or link to uh, and share with your colleagues and your users. Certainly this is just the start of your getting to know some of these business resources. We really encourage you to use that training site free to you to save yourself some time. And then certainly if you think about any additional questions as you continue to explore, you can reach out to me directly. My email is on the screen. I'll also be sending out a follow-up email to everyone who registered for today's session that will include a link to the recording. So you can, you know, review the session and then let me know if you have any questions just by responding to that follow-up email. All right, I'm not seeing any questions come in here, so I'm going to go ahead and finish up the recording and then close down the session. But I really appreciate your time. I hope you've got some great tips and tricks to take back to your business community when it comes to supporting the funding process. If you could do me a favor as you close out of the WebEx today, if you could fill out the quick pop-up survey that will uh, uh, display for you. I am evaluated based on my response rate to that survey. And I would love to get your feedback about how to make these future sessions even more engaging. Thanks very much for your time. Really appreciate it. And I wish you all the best as you continue to explore.